Um, the first question I have for you is um, about the relation of the institution to the artistic project. In our introductory text for the session, it says um, uh, that uh, there are new foundations for new relationships between artists, actions, and institutional response. And um, I would put a huge question mark behind that because I still see um, a lot of uh, institutional activity and artistic response. Uh, mainly in the way, um, and this is why I would like to ask for um, the relation of institutions to artistic projects, that I see curators like um, schizophrenically jumping between the expectations of funding bodies, uh, sponsors, and the artistic projects, and the, the ideology and the expectations of the background of the funding structure of the sponsors, and the visions and suggestions that are made within artistic projects, like for example, for new ideas of communality, of how to live together. And um, we didn't talk, or you all didn't talk so much about the economic background, so therefore I want to ask you, how, is, uh, how do you experience uh, this relation in your own work? Like Bo, for example, you said that it's very important to um, invite critical projects, so that artist projects are critical. I would 100% agree with that, but I would also ask, but what about the curator's activity? So what about the institution? Can this also be critical? So when you said that, um, that the projects um, that you would expect from the project or you would want the projects to um, teach the rich Norwegians how public space can become public again, is there also something the institution can do about it? And how, how can the institution be used to support this um, yeah, message? And uh, of course I see that uh, all these three institutions you are working with are very different in that kind. So artistic and institutional um, activities are very much overlapping with Juan Krupa, but still there is an economic background as well. So you also have like foundations, funding bodies you're collaborating with. And, um, yeah, so that would be a question for you all. Do, how do you experience these dissonances? How do you work with them? And do you also see a perspective for the institution to become proactive in this kind of criticism? Who wants to start? I can start. Uh, coming from a context where an institution is not that strong, uh, to begin with, like, in, like state institution, public institution, even private institutions. Uh, one of the reasons we, we founded Ruang Rupa was because it was uh, art scene at that moment uh, after, 19, after 1998, uh, the New Order finished, uh, was mainly in the hand of uh, commercial market. Uh, and then being untalented as we are, you know, we cannot paint, uh, we cannot sell stuff. Uh, we build our own space. Uh, it's as simple as that, maybe. One of the, uh, just like uh, apple to apple like that. Uh, but again, that's also one of the things after 10 years, uh, we realize we've become another institution that we have to uh, we have to be critical towards ourselves even. And then um, right, now, right, right now we're also still doing it. Uh, but sometimes, uh, yeah, we're doing it without the burden of actually sustaining. Uh, it's fine. We've talked about it sometimes. Uh, if we have to close down mm. tomorrow, it's fine. For now, it's fine. Uh, until now, uh, it's it's that kind of responsibility. Uh, we can still do it, uh, not by Ruang Rupa for now, uh, and then 
economically, the second second thing that you touch upon, uh, yes, of course, it's a challenge all the time up until now. None of us are, have been rich just by doing art. Uh, but from the beginning, maybe it's also why uh, we say we make friends, not art, because this is not based on that kind of transaction and thinking. Uh, we can make something. We begin. Uh, we begin without nothing, and then, uh, as the as as we get old, and then we are old now. Uh, we uh, there are certain again opportunities that are offered to us and then it's kind of stupid not to take it uh, so we take it but the question is how to maintain the independ our independence towards what we want to do mm -hmm. uh, and then actually right now we're fighting we're struggling to make a paradigm shift in uh, connection between funding and funder, uh, uh, fundy and funder. No, am I correct? Yeah, the one who who got funding and then the one mm -hmm. we 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 we're trying to reject the kind of uh, structure of report writing. Uh, Successfully, we're struggling right okay. now, uh, <laughs> and we're not alone. We're 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 in a part of like a bigger community of of these collectives from mostly global south uh, mm -hmm. for the yeah for the lack of better term uh, to to fight against this and then maybe then it will not become charity anymore it will not become because it, that's that's one thing that that is really really this is neo imperialism basically mm -hmm. you know uh, we have to sell as you said we have mm -hmm. to sell it and frame it and as if we're doing something good for the public, but honestly, this, we're, we're doing it because we think it's the thing we can do, mm -hmm. and then expanding it, expanding the term of public, you know. So in the beginning, it was like, when you, when you were still like small, it was the model of self-exploitation as an alternative to being dependent. Mm -hmm. And now you 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 get the chance to um, you say you, you grab the chance to have like bigger budgets and do more and have mm -hmm. more visibility and try to critically navigate mm -hmm. within this or even which, hack which it. I think it's crucial. Yeah, or even hack an institution. You know, like for example, mm -hmm. uh, Sonspec for uh, Jakarta Bayani or whatever, take it over because it's not that strong to mm -hmm. begin with. Uh, yeah, I was hoping you would uh, tell us a little <laughs> bit more about your plans for Sonspec. Uh, well, maybe should I? Maybe because so, like, yeah. I think I uh, everyone. Has <laughs> 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 uh, but uh, no, we want to make not a, a, a sculpture exhibition this time. We want to make mm -hmm. it a, a, a festival kind of for the city. We're interested in peop in Arnhem as a city itself. Uh, the way it was it was explained to us from the beginning. We didn't know about about Arnhem. Uh, before this, uh, is that it was it was founded in 1949, and it's older than Documenta, for example. Mm -hmm. I don't think that kind of uh, uh, comparison is is healthy, because as you can see, maybe you can feel that we're playing small leagues. We like being intimate like that. We like. Uh, this is an analogy, football analogy. I don't like football, but a lot of my <laughs> friends do. Uh, uh, but to be compared to, for example, to Real Madrid, when we actually want to make Arnhemia, just mm -hmm. like we're, I think we're, we, our values, one of our values is to take that intimacy and then leverage it somehow to more visibility and then to, to, to make it business, because like if you're playing Real Madrid or Ajax or whatever, or I don't know in Sweden, what's the what's the what's the big club? It's business, you know. Mm -hmm. And then everything else just like go away. And then with small uh, clubs, 
every every time you you get a, a, a match, people from your neighbor will watch you, and then and then that kind of intimacy, I think, is the last bastion of against the system which is crumbling down. No, it cannot still be uh, valued yet mm -hmm. by by the system. Yeah, and then we are, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, it's going to be, we're trying to make it intimate. It's going to be all over the city. Uh, not bombastic, I think. I don't think we're going to make it bombastic. It, it, it's still going to be sizable, but yeah, uh, at the time we can present it, we're going to. Right now it's too soon, I think, <laughs> to make it public. Okay, forward. Well, you said you um, you feel like a bureaucrat. Is it a critical bureaucrat? I am a bureaucrat. So this says creator here, but I'm not a creator. Uh, I think creating is uh, following a praxis, and I'm not doing that praxis. So I have been the creator before I started, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I'm in a quite a squeeze position and a balance. But I think it's in this field, it's always a really challenged balance. So I am working for the state under the culture department. And I come from an institution that is um, uh, started in 1973 after artist uh, protest movement that they wanted to like, get money for and also be a part of the society and, and in a, some kind of aesthetic, aesthetification of, of the society. And then it was called a decoration found. But the decoration found was mm -hmm. changed in 2006 when also the state understood that uh, the beautification, I mean, good art can also be ugly, just uh, to, to say it very shortly. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this uh, platform that I was uh, describing is the only platform that has been kind of um, interpreted from, from the institution itself, not from a political uh, direction. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, since this has started in 2008, everyone has been waiting for it to close down. And that's why I'm saying uh, it's it, like public art, public, it's, you always say art and public space. Because art, mm -hmm. as we know it, is in institutions are something totally different. And public space, you never say art in public space. So, pu public space, that's where I start. I mm -hmm. start to, because that's something that we share. And because we are not going in and, and affecting the art project. You can ask them, even the Congo village. We don't go in. They are doing the artistic work. We are just trying to, to navigate and make it possible, make those room possible, as I say, mm -hmm. that we share. So it's a kind of principle, just to map the, the principle that we have that define a public uh, space. But it's difficult since you represent, you re-represent, or maybe I misrepresent the state. So I, I'm not connected to, I'm trying to not be connected, as you say, uh, to promote a certain kind of art. I'm trying to promote, make those room possible to as much diversity as possible. And do you experience this as a conflict between the expectations of like your funding body and those ideologies or visions realized in the art projects? Absolutely, because the money comes from the taxpayers. So everyone has an opinion of what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And that is also, you know, that is, should be like that. It should be kind of a, a knowledge from the artist that it comes from the tax money and also the taxpayer should also realize that we need art in the society. So mm -hmm. it's also a double obligation. Uh, to share and uh, and um, and that is the situation in Scandinavia and especially in Norway that mm -hmm. that it's uh, I mean almost all artists are public funded uh, even if they don't talk about it mm -hmm. because it's like a little bit dirty in a way but I think that you could in somehow if we use the principle of, of the society mm -hmm. of the welfare state that is like in Norway going in pieces you could actually uh, use it as a tool mm -hmm. of, of uh, yeah, promoting uh, and giving more freedom for f freedom of expression. Right. And you were also one of the co-founders of uh, Oslo Konstal, so you changed sides within the program, you could say. 
Yes, I was founder of Osterkunsthal, but I also was the founder of Bergenkunsthal, and even that mm -hmm. is more function, it functions. Mm -hmm. That was also a kind of, we have, a, uh, we have something in Norway that's really good, the, 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 the language is lacking a lot, there's a lot of dialects, but they are very concrete, and I can't, I can't actually, I don't know if I can, but en spade, er en spade. Mm -hmm. it's like a glass is a glass, it's, it's nothing in between. And, uh, and, um, and uh, uh, this is a little bit like the Norwegian language. <laughs> so so uh, when, when I start the project, I, I don't want to act like a creator. I'm a bureaucrat. I am a bureaucrat. If I should like, act like a creator, I would, mm -hmm. you know, I, would, it's, I, I think even if, because I'm, I'm, on, I'm on there for lifetime. No, I'm not the one who should put up things in the public space. I should just make the room that so many artists as possible can get there and do their things and, uh, and, and challenge the democracy, to challenge this, mm -hmm. that space. It doesn't mean that Euro is not standing for, as I say, uh, art ideology. I could, I could see like uh, a lot of projects or movements that actually take uh, care of the, uh, of the democracy or the, that room in another way, like a celebration or whatever, a festival. Or, so it's, uh, it's just that I tried to map that they are very close connected and I find it very surprisingly that people don't really talk about it in Scandinavian. It's like, because that's mm -hmm. the whole society is built on. Okay. I, 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 one of the things that struck me looking at the sequence of presentations was in the first presentation where we had the human zoo and then in your presentation Paolo where we had that aerial shot of the uh, this, the refugees in the boat crossing the Mediterranean I presume and they're looking up at the at the camera That's and I, I just thought it's about the production of types of spectacle and I guess one of the things that Andrea referenced this morning is, is a kind of loss of confidence in the idea of public because of the capture of this with publicity. And it's something about the, particularly the repetition of that logo. I just thought, okay, so one of the things about organizations is they must reproduce themselves, they must produce visibility for themselves. But the other thing is that what a lot of the practices are about are orchestrating an economy of visibility. And I'm just wondering if there's maybe some tensions in this, in the possibility that what, what happens is that you end up circulating images within the mass media and that becomes the primary relay for the, that's where the work ultimately has some kind of existence. And I'm just wondering if maybe from your different perspectives you could talk a little bit about that, because I think it plays differently yeah. in the different contexts. Well, yeah, I think, that, first of all, I, I think you, you cannot generalize, uh, especially talking about institutions. What is an institution? When do you become an institution? And when do you end up being an institution? What do you become? And um, then... Institutions and the relation with them is not only about money. Yeah, there is the funding relation, uh, which is part of most of, of our activities, not always, but oftentimes. But sometimes, and more and more so, uh, you can have the desire to deal with institutions because they are constituting elements of societal fabric. They shape our life and they shape the way we where and how we live. Therefore, someone, you talked about hacking, or at, at least connecting to, and bringing, talking to, not, you don't need always a public, I agree on this. Why, why, for some reason you need public. For other reasons and projects and aims, public is definitely not needed. The, the, the exhibition that is on now in Geneva, United Nations headquarters will be not visited by a public. But the, the reason why we're doing it, it's because the, the decision makers that who for the next year will work on Habitat 3, so trying to come up with standards of smart cities and the likes, will be exposed to such practices. A couple of guys who are here also are part of this exhibition. Um, so you're trying to affect someone 
not as a public, but as, as a, someone you're having a dialogue with. So you're using uh, tools like visibility can be a tremendous tool. We know very well, corporation and capitalism globally has got a lot to tell us about that. You can be used by it, of course, but you can use it uh, as well. So the, the logo issue is a big thing, of course, something we've been reflecting upon a lot and we realize that it's a very ed edgy uh, strategy. Um, but nevertheless, we're trying to work with it. To, to, it's a matter for us to try and mold and, and get you know, in our hands to work with. We might be burnt. Yes, that's right. And finally, maybe one thing I could say, uh, the relation with uh, institutions. Um, we had many, many uh, experiences, everyone, but one thing that was for me very in instructive and inspiring was with the Bordeaux. Is there anyone from France? Cool, so I can speak uh, easy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we were invited to uh, run, to curate the urban art biennial in Bordeaux a few years ago. And the, the problem, the point was that the, the budget, actually, in this case was the money. There was a, a, an interesting, quite good budget of two and a half million euros for production. Generally, these kind of events, they address 80 or more percent of the budget to external production, inviting production from, from the external to showcase and get visibility and and 20% in on the on the on the on the local we we inverted the thing so there was a lot of money that we would spend on the on the local for a, a year and a half we moved some offices there we lived there some of us for a year and a half but we had a lot of money we had about 2 million euro to spend on, on on the city and that that yes that was a big issue uh, so, um, I think it is, a, it is an issue, the, uh, dealing with institution. When in that case, we realized that it was a big struggle because we had money, we had the, for a certain kind of power, and, uh, and we were facing a lot of resistance from the bureaucrats. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because we were actually exerting, uh, uh, without being bureaucrats, because as, exactly as you're saying, we were curators, but we had state money, and we, we were actually challenging the bureaucrats. Yeah. Yeah, take um, short I love to be a bureaucrat. <laughs> That's why yeah, I really like it. I really like the position of being a bureaucrat also. But, um, but uh, I would say that... Um, that Visuality is not, that's also very comfortable. When I was in the Bergen Kunst, I've raised money. This visuality is always like pumping out because you need to get the attention economically. Uh, being working for the state, I don't have to. I, you know, I just doesn't have to, I don't have to make a logo. Uh, the thing is that what happened afterwards, some of this project got enormous attention and discussion in the media, especially. Uh, it keep this uh, this work alive because the state can't take it, can't just take it away now. But isn't isn't this so? The site of agency is the media, yeah. And the the work that you do has some kind of traction because you circulate messages in the media. And I, I guess it's this is the concern I would have is that. If we slip over from the public as a as this mm. multiple space that you keep talking about multiplicity mm. diversity, mm. but if it becomes this space where messages are pumped at us mm. or where we display ourselves in a configuration here we 're all together we 're all here in our wheelchairs oriented to the camera in display. Mm. we are a message we circulate we are selfies on facebook i mean it's i 'm just wondering about the the particular logics of visibility, the logics of publicity, yeah. and is it possible that what you're doing slips from being creating, because I think you, you're creating these other moments of publicness, the congregations in the marketplace, mm -hmm. but then they start to circulate as images. It becomes a particular 
message circulated through the channels of Sao Paulo, Sandsbeck, mm. and, and, and you, it, it was implicit in one of the presentations that maybe Venice, as this kind of orchestration of spectacular visibility, is, is in some way, there's, a, there's some kind of hint of a problem there. There's something going wrong where we are becoming the target of messages rather than people caught up in some kind of contestation with each other. But mm -hmm. I, I'd be curious about how you see this, because it, it seems you're signaling it as a tension within the group, the move from the local action in Jakarta to, to circulating within this other mm -hmm. kind of media sphere. Uh, yeah. We've been aware of that because we like to make events to begin with. Uh, every one of us like to make events uh, for different reasons. And then, of course, publication, publicity, and all those kind of stuff has always been uh, our... Uh, it's not a support part of our work. It is, it is the work as well. Uh, Rackfest. You know, uh, it is a message in its own. Uh, how we communicate it to the other is, is that's actually the work. Uh, and then, so it, 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 it's kind of, it holds a different thing. I think if uh, we realize from Indonesia, for example, a country with, uh, or Jakarta, a city with the most tweets in in, in one minute, uh, that kind of stuff. No, like it's the most users of Facebook in Indonesia. Uh, those kind of statistics we realize, and then I think in order to, I think we should use it, inundate stuff. Uh, if instead of one 1984 style, like it, we was like that, no, in 1970s, 1980s. It's, I think that's a lot of euphoria that way, starting from 1998, in, in, in like the freedom of, of media. And then that's why I think also why we, we become so good at tweeting. Uh, so that's why I want to I wanna steal this one as well for, for Jakarta. I think it's going to be just like super fast. <laughs> uh, just, just as a, but, uh, uh, but we have, this is also relates, I think, beautifully with, with, with the notion of public, what you are talking about and we're talking about right now, and then also a myth. Uh, because we, we realize what we're doing by, by, by dealing with those kind of media, uh, the young, what kind of, how, how the young people consume. That's why we make markets, no? Uh, because people consume. Usually they don't consume this stuff, secondhand stuff at that moment. Right now everyone uses uh, secondhand. But uh, when we began with, and then it started with the research uh, on uh, how young people actually consume by the end of Ramadan. Uh, after their fasting, they want to wear something new. And then, and then what kind of stuff usually, and then instead of buying Zara all the time, uh, maybe, it's nice, maybe it's also nice for people to buy it on records instead of, so they can play it in their, in their house. So it's not about, about looking, but it's about that kind of stuff. But, uh, but, but consumption and, and Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, you name it, uh, radio even, uh, all those kind of stuff, we use it to build the myth, to, to come up because we realize what we've been fed to us, and then let's create our own myth, no? Uh, and then the, you, the younger people are buying it, so in the last two editions of Rackfest, not in, in this one, we started to, we realized that it's actually also can be a political uh, awareness vehicle. So then we work with uh, people who are work, already working in human rights, for example, killing of Munir, killing of how, 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 how poisons are, you, uh, how, uh, stopping of alcohol or taxing alcohol really high actually makes us kill ourselves, for example, in Indonesia. That kind of stuff. So 
though, but those realizations weren't a designated thing from the beginning. We're interested in actually also taking that media first. Okay, video as a, as a, as a biennial started with, with that as well. Like we want to take over that technology because we want to use it for our own means. And then let's, let's be honest, you know, uh, we're going to make myths. Uh, we're not going to make public. We're not. We're going to. We're. We're, we're, not going, we're not dealing with the same kind of uh, understanding of public uh, we are talking about kind of right now. You know. I think the role of uh, institutions is crucial in this process. So um, to quote the exhibition title you mentioned, that critique is not enough, I want to say like in the defense of the critical bureaucrat, that we have to, to gain back institutions as operational in a public interest. So institutions is, the institution is like kind of accessible for some of us to um, implement changes in like how, like the example of your institution, how like um, money is um, channeled to art projects, uh, which brings me back, and then in a larger sense, of course, as a societal agent and in the public interest. Um, I think we should mention one um, of these questions, which is, where is it now? How can the public space become more accessible for unestablished and up-and-coming artists? Maybe yeah, uh, the educational, yeah, what do you want to, because you two are very interested in educational projects. You just started um, Insti um, yeah, Institute Institute Kuan and education is, of course, at Chita de Lata, one of the main activities. Mm -hmm. So maybe you would like to refer for, to that. But for young artists, for example, yeah, I'm sorry, I might talk again. Uh, really short. For young artists, if, they, if they're asking about space, it, it's, the, yeah, just like take it over. That would be our answer. Uh, somehow, you, sh you need to. Uh, I don't know how, because different contexts are different uh, with different strategies, but like you need to come up with certain kind of uh, kick in the teeth and then take it. Uh, and then, I forgot what's the other question. Oh, in uh, education. Uh, But we're interested in making, and uh, finally, we, it's, we, it's been our interest in the last 10 years, but finally we, we can, and then we want to, you know, like there are, uh, I think it's time for us to, to make, uh, to, to think about if there is a school, what would be for our, in our own term, because most of us don't even graduate from undergrad art school, uh, majority in Rang Rupa, because uh, it's just like not the stuff where it's not made for us. It's not made for any kind of interesting stuff anymore. It's it's really really uh, uh, it's a way to make to incorporate yourself to the system. I don't have to uh, elaborate on this because I think we all agree on this. It's the question is how to unlearn all those stuff that it's important for us. Uh, uh, as a as a as a concept, it needs to be unlearned first, and then we can question it. We never had the 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 the, the, the tools to do it. Uh, in the yeah, up until recently, I think then critical thinking can co come up. It's only recently. Before that, it's either too fee too afraid, or uh, it's been shut down. Mm -hmm. Well, in what way is Chita de Lati invested in education? Well, we started off as, a, as an educational environment in, in the 90s. And we never left that uh, because that is a way to continuously um, put yourself in question and, and progress and, uh, and learn, basically. Mm -hmm. So we changed a lot. For example, now we've changed... Uh, the artist in residency format in the 90s and in 2000, it was a long collective artist in residency, uh, 20 people up uh, for up to six months. 
And now um, we changed it to entirely. Now we do very small time, one week workshops on specific mm. topics, always related to art and societal change, inviting experts and mentors from, from the world over with their practices. Why do we do that? It's because um, things have completely changed from the 20, 15 years ago. Now you've got even too many artists in residencies scattered everywhere, which is good in a way, but in other ways it's a big problem because most artists have to, because they don't, have, they don't make money in other ways, so they have to live through one artist in residence one after the other. And it can be very, very exciting for, for a couple of years, but most times, apparently, it becomes pretty problematic. And definitely, if it is problematic for them, it's even more problematic for the, for the context, for the, for the ecologies, for, for, the, for the territories, for the places. Why? Because if artists don't live in places, how can their effect be, uh, be happen? We, we were taught about this morning about practices who can, that can last 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we are talking of uh, education mm -hmm. as a way to bring about competences, as I tried to mention in my speech, to be active in societal change, you need very serious uh, investment, very serious skills, and then you need long time uh, educational, uh, not educational, long time uh, investment in the places. Mm -hmm. In order for you not to cut ties with your projects and activities, I will not invite you to uh, six months artist in residency. Because otherwise, when you go back, your peers and, and partners that you made projects with will not follow you anymore. They will feel betrayal from you, who left mm -hmm. for six months. Most of the times, you are one of the ones who are leading the project. Uh, therefore, if you leave, you are really in, in, in putting in big dangers the project. But in relation to like parachuted artists coming in for, I don't know, a week to set up a project, I think a residency could also be yeah. a no, no, good the, solution. No, 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 I don't want, no, the, the artists who come to Cittadelarte, they don't come to produce art in, in Cittadelarte. Mm -hmm. They come to educational workshop. They share practices, they learn and teach each other specific uh, subtopics in the mm -hmm. big umbrella mm -hmm. of art and societal change. I, I we, think we have to, we're getting very strong signals that we have to. Workshops finish. are waiting, <laughs> coffee is waiting, okay. But can we thank our three Thank, 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 thank you, you very, very much. Thank you very much.